Hey everybody, uh, Garrett Colvin here. I'm drinking an OJ. It's a double IPA by Lone Pine Brewery up in uh, Portland, Maine. I think they have Gorham, Maine too. It's another brewing facility they have. And it's delicious. You know, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Vermont, they're all get a lot of uh, high praise for having some of the best breweries in the area, and, and they do, deservedly so, but uh, don't sleep on Maine. Plenty of uh, awesome breweries up there as well. But anyways, this, um, this photo here that you guys just saw is of my father and I uh, hunting a piece of land that we've hunted in, out in Richmond my whole life, and my dad's been hunting it 30 some odd years. He, um, he started hunting it when we first moved to Richmond when I was maybe just a few months old, actually. And it's a place I love. Uh, even still, um, I, I hunted every year and even still as I moved out to, to Boston, to the city, I make it a point to, to make sure I get back home almost every weekend. In fact, there's been plenty of times I'll wake up at three in the morning and hop in the car, maybe two and a half hour drive down the pike to exit one, uh, find the hunting spot, get dressed in the dark and make my way up to the tree stand. Uh, just to hunt for the day, to turn around and come back to, to Boston in the night. Um, but yeah, it's a place I love. It's a place I'm very, very familiar with. We were very fortunate. My father got permission 30 some odd years ago from a few different landowners to, hunt their their land so it's all private property uh, my dad posted it for them and they've actually become pretty good fan, friends of the uh the family um but yeah it, it's not a huge piece of land i want to say all combined because there's a couple different neighboring properties that we've had permission to hunt now it's probably just under 300 acres um and this particular deer um takes place late season it was a um, shotgun or excuse me it was black powder so it was real late in the season it was my father and a friend of the family, a friend of my father's, um, this guy named Lou. And uh, Lou's late 70s, early 80s, so he's an older guy. And, uh, but he still gets out there, he still can climb the mountain, he can still help drag a deer, he still climbs a tree stand, he's, he's awesome. He's probably 5'5", five, 5'4", five, five, uh, big Coke bottle glasses, real good guy. Hunted his whole life, got tons of experience, he's awesome. Uh, but the plan that morning was to sit for just a few hours in the morning. Uh, again, we, we've hunted it hard all season, like we do every season. So come black powder, when you're coming down to your last couple of days of the season, it's, uh, it's tough to kind of pattern those deer. They've kind of moved on from the property because we've done such pressure. There's been a lot of pressure on them. Um, so we were sitting and Lou and I kind of went up and over the top of this. The way the property is, is it's kind of like you go up and over a mountain or it's not a mountain it's a big hill but we call it the mountain you go up and over the top of the mountain and back down the other side into it is a, a ravine with a river that runs through it and you kind of go back up to the other neighboring property and we kind of stop at the top of that 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 other mountain or, or hill um and louis and i went up and over in the dark and got set up in these two different stands i think i was in what we call the gut and louis was in what we call the pine and my dad stayed on uh, the side of the mountain closest to, oh no, my dad actually went up that morning, went up to the top to where we call the top sand. Um, and we waited until, I want to say it was only like nine o'clock or so. Um, the way it works is I had the longest walk, Louie had the second longest walk back to the car, and my father had the shortest walk. And the plan was for my father to just drop down the top towards the car almost. And Louie and I, I was going to pick up Louie, come to the gut, walk through the gut to the pine stand, pick up Louie. And then Louie and I were going to walk just a two-man push, a real small push. You can't even really call it a drive because it's just the two of us. And we were going to walk down, we were going to walk around the side of the mountain because there is an area down there, a little thick with pines, but a pretty well-known travel route that my, uh, my father's, we've had success doing this a few times in the past, not often. Um, but it was a good idea for us to just kind of all do that and try to push a couple deer to my father who was now had dropped down off the top a little bit closer to the cars at that point. Um, and Louie and I were just going to try and uh, scoot some deer his way, hopefully find some that were bedded down in that area. 
So I pick up Louie. Uh, Louie and I get to, again, the sort of the back side of the mountain, and we're going to start walking around it. I'm going to go up about halfway the mountain. Louie's going to stay. At, when we far, started, he was probably 60, 80 yards to my right, so to my 3 o'clock, uh, Louie was. And we start walking together. And the idea was is we're going to push deer to my father, who's then sitting on the other side. Um, we get about halfway through the walk, and it's quick. It's only like a 15, 20 minutes when you got, uh, you know, an 80-year-old with you. Um, so we're getting to the point, and the way the topography works there is there's a point where Louie and I eventually end up, as we're coming around the hill, or the mountain, uh, Louie and I, I, I kind of funnel down towards Louie, and Louie kind of funnels up to us just because of the way the topography is. And now Louie is about probably 30, maybe 40 yards to my right, and he's probably at like my four o'clock. He's about 15, 20 yards behind me, but again, about 40 yards to my right. So maybe 50, 60 yards uh, to my four o'clock. Maybe even closer actually, probably closer to like 45, 50 yards. And we're coming around the bend and you can only see at this point because again, we're coming around the bend, maybe 40 yards in front of me. Louis can probably see 60 yards. And I look up and, you know, there's snow on the ground. And the beauty of having snow on the ground is you, you catch movement really, really easily. And I look up and I catch movement and it's at my one o'clock right now. And they're about 60 yards out, 50 yards out, and they're closing in. They're, they're trotting, actually. They're, they're moving pretty quickly. They're not just meandering. And I look up and I see not one, not two, not three, not four, but five different doe. Varying in size, there's a couple yearlings in there and a couple bigger does, and they're on the move. So what happened was, is my father jumped down from the top. He must have busted these does, who were then going to doing the reverse of what we thought the deer were going to do that morning, and started heading right towards Louis and I. And in fact, because they're at my one o'clock and Louis at my four, these deer are walking. They're going to end up in Louis's lap. They're about 50 yards in front of Louis at this point. So I look and I see them, and I look back at Louie, and he just got his head down, walking. Doesn't see him. He's an older guy, he can't really see that well anyways. Um, so I'm trying to like, I, I don't know what to do. I kind of like wave to Louie, and I also don't want to spook the deer, the doe, because they can't see us, they can't smell us at this point. And again, they're, they're gonna end up in Louie's lap any second now. I can't get Louie's attention. And now the deer are kind of going from my one o'clock to my two o'clock. And when they get to my two o'clock, they're only 40 yards in front of Lou at this point. So in my, not really my panic, but I thought, you know, here's the only chance I've had before it becomes really dangerous for me to start shooting to my three o'clock and, you know, only 15, 20 yards in front of Lou. Um, so I pull up. It just so happens that the first doe that's leading the pack is what I thought was, I didn't have much time. This all happens in a matter of a few seconds. Um, is what I think is the, the biggest of the does. Pull up, I have a scope on my, uh, my 50 caliber uh, black powder and I kind of lead the doe. I look up, she gets her front shoulder into my scope. I touch one off, boom! And as I'm recovering from the recoil, I can see that she had dropped. And the rest of the does kind of scattered. I actually don't really remember where they went. I think they all went to their left, further away from, from us. And it all happened so quick. Now again, Louis has no idea any of this is happening. So he's only 40 yards away from me and these does are maybe 30 yards in front of him at this point. I know it sounds like it's kind of um, maybe a, a not so safe of a shot to take, but one, I felt safe, I felt confident. Two, maybe the story makes it sound like it, that shot was a little close to Louis. Um, but it really wasn't. There was no, there was no fear. I had no fear of, you know, slipping up and putting a shot too close to Lou. None of that. Um, but so, you know, as I recover from the recoil and I see that the doe had dropped and she's not even kicking, she, she's down, she's out. I look over at Lou and Lou's got this dumbfounded look on his face and he's looking over at me. And he's got those big Coke bottle glasses, which makes his eyes look even bigger. And he's blinking at me and I go... Lou, there's a, a deer right in front of you. And he goes, what, what? and he kind of like goes like this and he's looking around and sure as shit, those, those does were, were far gone at that point. 
And so, you know, I walk over to, to Louie and I go, Louie, those deer were going to end up in your lap. And he's laughing. And he goes, I didn't see him. I wasn't paying attention. I thought we were pushing them to your father. Um, so just, I wish I could explain or take a photo. Uh, I have one in my memory, but I wish I had a photo to share with everybody of Louie's look. Because just imagine not expecting anything and having a 50 caliber go off 40 yards from you and then having a doe laying dead in front of him at 30 yards. Um, awesome story. Um, really, really funny. Uh, my dad comes over. He's super excited, you know, that his son caught, shot a doe. Um, and it was actually, I think, one of the, the last times my father and I were able to shoot deer together hunting. My father passed away in the middle of two seasons, not this past season, but the season prior. Um, so that's that piece of property there will always hold a special place in my heart because it's you know it's where I spent most of the time uh, with my father during the hunting season. We talked more often than we did during the off season. I saw my father again because I moved out to, to Boston. He's in the Berkshires. I saw my father a hell of a lot more during the hunting season than I did um, during the off seasons, and it was usually at Richmond at that property. Um, before and after our hunts. Um, so my dad came over, he was super excited. Another funny thing too is, you know, I'm cleaning the deer, my dad wants to get a photo for us. In fact, he, uh, he made me this frame here and you can see there's the photo of my father and I. Um, and he made this frame, he actually makes knives out of antlers. Um, this is the first one he ever made and, and gave to me, but something he was supposed to do in his retirement as a hobby. He, uh, he passed away just about a year before he was set to retire, actually. Um, but, you know, my father wanted to memorize the hunt with the photo that you guys just saw. And trying to explain to Lou, this 80-year-old man, how to take a photo with an iPhone, um, I thought was funny. My father thought it was a bit frustrating. But again, he's, um, you know, Lou's still kicking, Lou's still out hunting. I actually see him, you know, once a year, typically during the hunting season. And... Um, yeah, cheers everybody. Stay safe. I know I'm quarantined at least here in Boston. I hope everybody's staying safe. Stay outdoors as much as possible and uh, cheers everybody.